All right guys, so today we're gonna be working on this Bolens 1476, I believe, based on the pictures and stuff that I found online. Uh, they used to call these tractors the midget model or a midget 10 which was before the subcompact tractors you know kind of got a hook on in the market this tractor here is my brother's and he picked it up last year i think for like 900 bucks something like that and since then he has gone through the whole tractor sanded off all the rust and repainted it so he's got it looking pretty nice we did go through and service it did the engine oil and filter hydrostatic oil and filter and we also had to replace some of these hoses i did these off camera at my house last summer all new hoses for the loader and a brand new high pressure hose coming off the pump going to the loader valve the only hose we didn't replace here is the return line because it wasn't in too bad a shape and it's just a return line so today what we're going to be doing is installing a new loader valve because the issue he's been having is these loader sticks here are starting to stick you can kind of tell right there it's sticking so they're just in real rough shape i don't think they're the original but they're pretty close to it he was trying to plow snow with it this winter and the bucket was sticking the curl and the lift function so he almost couldn't even plow with it um, so we got a brand new loader valve for him, which is over here on the bench. So this loader valve, I got him for Christmas. I got for him off eBay. Can't tell you exactly which seller I got it from, but it appears to be a pretty decent loader valve. This is a loader valve with the stick on it, so he don't have to mess with those two levers anymore with all four directions built into the stick. That being said, I also had some extra fittings laying around that I gave him. So we got four female couplers and four male couplers. These are actually artillion couplers that I had laying around. So I had a bunch of these laying around, so I gave him four of them, and I also have the boots for him as well. So we'll be putting those on his hoses here. I don't think I'm gonna have to replace any of these new hydraulic lines i think they're all long enough the only one that kind of scares me is this high pressure line here that's coming off the pump as you can see it's pretty short so it's going to be kind of a stretch to make it to the new pump because as you'll see this high pressure line comes off the back of the manifold here where on a new manifold the pressure line is going to have to come off the side so this manifold here gets mounted about like this and you can see this port right here this is the pressure line and this other red plug here that is your return to tank so that one won't be a big deal at all because that's just going to go straight down into the tank there which is actually kind of unique it goes through the loader which i thought was pretty neat but that one won't be a problem but off this one here this pressure line we're going to have to elbow off and hopefully i could put like an extension on there or a long nipple so that i can get it out beyond the loader valve there so that i can connect that original hose so that we don't have to get a whole new hose made up hopefully that'll be the case we'll have to figure it out first thing i'm going to do here is just start tearing this valve off because the sooner i get it off the sooner i can figure out exactly what fittings i'm going to need to adapt this new valve to this old tractor all right i'm going to start by taking these lines off here top hoses and I'm not going to mark where they go because it's going to be totally different on a new valve so I'm not too worried about where they go right now luckily we'll be putting on those quick couplers after so I can just switch them around and figure out what goes to what and I found my nice little box here where I save all the caps to these different hydraulic ends and pumps and whatnot uh, I found four caps so I could stick them on the ends of these so we don't get any dirt in them So now with all four of those out of the way, we can go ahead and tackle the pressure and return lines. Okay, now we just gotta take off this high pressure line. Now what we're going to be doing is removing the loader valve itself. But if you'll see here, they actually welded on this little bracket here. So you can see that's tied together. So that is on the bracket itself that the manifold is mounted to. So I'm going to have to pull these pins out or these links out so I could separate the levers from the manifold. So giving it a second look here, it looks like I could just take this bottom bolt off here. And then I could keep the levers with the manifold instead. I think that's going to be the easier option for sure. There we go. Okay, so this manifold is only connected with two bolts, just like the new one's gonna be. And I actually got these wing nuts here on the bottom, so I'm just gonna hold them with an adjustable wrench.
This thing should just lift right off now. There we go. All right, guys, here is the old valve compared to the new valve. You can see they're very similar in size, almost identical. One's a little bit wider, but the other one's just a touch longer. So it should work out pretty good. It should fit right on that mount, no problem. So now what we gotta do is mock up this new valve here. We gotta put it in place so I can figure out how much more oil return hose I gotta buy because it's gonna be too short, I believe. And we gotta figure out if the hydraulic hoses for the main four going up to the top of the manifold are gonna reach and how much extension we're gonna need for the pressure line that's gonna be coming off the side with this elbow that I was telling you guys in the beginning. So let's go ahead and slap this up there and see what we find. All right, so dropping this loader valve in place here, you can see it's gonna fit the plate pretty well. But one problem I do see is how low this loader joystick is. Looks like it's gonna be just above your knee, if not hitting your knee. So we're gonna have to elevate this loader valve more like that position, like your regular standard position. I'm gonna have to angle it up like that. So I'm gonna have to get some uh, flat stock and we're gonna have to weld something to this bracket here so we can pitch this loader valve upwards like this. Uh, I think if I get it like that, I think it's gonna be perfect. From here, it looks like it's just about right. So let me see what I can come up with for some steel and I'll be right back. All right, so I found these two pieces here, flat stock. Both of them are about a quarter inch thick. So nice beefy flat stock here. Um, this is like an old mount plate that I had for something. I think it came with something I bought, like a plow or something. So I think if I use these two pieces here, if I set the one like this here, kind of angle it something like that, maybe like that right there. And we grab the loader valve. We set that on top. You can see we got a perfect angle right there. So it's about a 45 degree off that bracket. So basically I'm gonna have to weld these two plates together. Luckily this black plate here is the exact size of this loader valve, so that should work out good. I'll obviously have to drill some new holes for it, but at least it's wide enough to fully mount this loader valve. So now what we need to check is if all the lines are gonna match up so I can figure out exactly what fittings I'm gonna need to install all the hydraulic hoses along with the pressure and return line here. All right, so I've got you guys up a little bit closer now. Looking at all the hydraulic lines here, your four main lines going to the unit, those look like they're gonna be plenty long enough. We've got lots of hose here, and I should be able to curl the hose up like this, no problem, and connect them to all these ports here. This is gonna be the return on this manifold. The return is here, and the high pressure line is off the other side, just on the opposite side here. We're gonna have to rework this a little bit using some fittings. Luckily, the return line looks like it's gonna line up pretty nicely here with the return on the manifold. So I'm just gonna have to elbow out and down to connect this return line here, which I'm gonna end up replacing anyway because it's all dry rotted here. And now we need to look at the high pressure line here and see how far that comes up. So let's take a little bit closer look at that. All right, I got you guys over on the other side now. Here is the pressure port on the other side of the manifold. As you can see here with it resting on a plate, the high pressure line, which is right here, comes really close to that, that line. So I think we're gonna get lucky being that it's so close. I think all I'm gonna have to do is elbow out of here and I should be able to connect this high pressure line, no problem. So I gotta look for a right angle hydraulic fitting. I think this is half inch. So hopefully I'll have one of those and the rest of the parts I'm gonna have to go to the store and buy. So let me go pick that stuff up and when I get back, I will show you guys what I got. All right guys, so I just got back from the hardware store here. So these fittings coming out of the block here, I thought these were three quarter, they're actually half inch. I think I was thinking three quarter because the last loader valve I installed, which was a loader valve from Tractor Supply, that one had all three quarter outlets on it, which I thought were pretty massive because you had to downsize it quite a bit. So thankfully these are only half inch. So what I ended up getting was four half inch to quarter inch reducers or bushings for these four ports here, which are gonna be going to these four couplers right here. I got these four nipples here. These are hydraulic nipples. And I'll be using those to install these male couplers here on the ends of the bushings. And then as far as the inlet and outlet go, those are gonna be half inch to three eighths bushings. So I got two of them right here, one, two. And then in my hydraulic fitting drawer, I was able to find this three eighths elbow with the correct coupler on the end to connect to that high pressure line. So that was really good. I was glad about that because these are not cheap fittings if you gotta go buy them. And then lastly, for a return line, we've got a three eighths galvanized elbow here with just a regular brass three eighths to half inch hose bar because it's just for the return line. So it'll be just fine not using hydraulic fittings. Now I do wanna say that the bushings I'm using, these are just regular galvanized bushings, um, but I've used these for adapting these hydraulic manifolds before, and I've always used them on like a lower PSI tractor. So the last one I did, I think the highest pressure rating was like 2,500 pounds. Um, this one will probably be even lower than that and I've never had a problem just using the bushings. Now, as far as using any other things like elbows and um, especially nipples and that kind of thing, you wanna make sure you use hydraulic ones because they gotta be rated for the pressure. But bushings aren't as temperamental, I found, because they are going inside the casting here for the manifold, and then we are putting a hydraulic fitting on the inside of it, 
which also strengthens it. And yeah, I've just never had a problem with one of these bursting or leaking um, on these smaller compact tractors where there's not a whole lot of pressure. So that's what I got for fittings. So now that we've figured that out, I think the next thing I'm gonna do here is get these two plates here that I've got. We'll get them cleaned up. I wanna tack them in place right on the machine here so I can line up the loader valve exactly where I want it. Put a couple tack welds in between these two plates to hold them together. That way we can keep the pitch or the angle that we've got right now. Then I'll take it off, put it on a bench, and we'll fully weld it. And then once we have the plates out of the way, I'm gonna cut off this little tab right here, which is for the old loader valve. We won't be needing that no more. And then I'm gonna clean up the edges a little bit, just get the paint off of them on the front and the back here so I can weld a nice bead. Now if I set the loader valve up on here, it's not gonna fall apart on me for one. For two, I'll be able to sit on the tractor here and get a feel for where this thing is at. So it's gonna be about right there. Yeah, it looks like that's perfect. It's right next to the steering wheel, but it's not gonna hit the steering wheel. Should have plenty of movement there. Because when this thing moves, you can see it doesn't go super far, so I don't got to worry about it hitting the steering wheel there. You could easily reach it. And this loader valve, you could adjust it as well. You could extend it way out, so I could extend it out for a little bit more reach, so you're not leaning forward to grab it. But that right there feels perfect to me. I'm just gonna use a sawzall here. I could use my plasma cutter, but it's not worth it to make one little small cut here. So I'm just gonna hack this off with the sawzall. All right, so I got the mount that we just made all cleaned up. So we shouldn't have any problems now. I cleaned up these edges here so we don't have any paint in the way. So we'll go ahead and put this in place. I'm gonna get it close to where I feel like I had it before. I'm pretty sure I lined up these two edges right here. So I'll get it back where I thought I had it and then we'll tack this thing in place. We'll give it one last check here and then we'll weld it together. All right, that's tacked in place nicely. I'm just gonna pop this valve on here one more time. This manifold, Let's see how she looks here. My biggest thing is to make sure that I can get this pressure line on the side here with that elbow. It looks like I got plenty of room there, so that shouldn't be a problem. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and weld it right there.
All right, so that's the final result of our custom bracket here. Should be all set. So I'm gonna set the loader manifold up here. We'll get our holes marked out and drilled so we can get it bolted in place. Okay, so now we've got the loader valve all mounted in place. We can go ahead and start installing the uh, hydraulic lines here. So the first line I'm gonna install is the high pressure line. That way we can make sure it clears the hood like I was hoping. The sealer I'm using here is a hydraulic thread paste made by Permatex. Part number on that is number 56521. And I've been using this stuff for a long time. I've never had a single hydraulic leak using this stuff. Works really good and it's safe for hydraulics. Okay, and thankfully, Looks like we're gonna have just enough hose here to mount to this, which is great. It's like I said in the beginning here, we just remade all these hydraulic hoses, so it'd be a shame if I had to remove them to buy new ones. Okay, let's see if this hood is gonna close or not. Perfect. Got about a quarter inch gap or so in between the fitting here and the, and the hood, so it's not gonna vibrate or rattle. You could easily get the hood open and closed. No problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these four bushings here on the top of the manifold. Okay, so now with that done, we can go ahead and install our four hydraulic nipples as well as our fittings here. I'm choosing to put the male fitting on the manifold side and the female end on the hose side because I just think that makes more sense. That way it'll be a lot easier to install and remove the couplings. And the thread pitch on these couplers is just a quarter inch pipe thread or hydraulic thread. So now we can go ahead and connect our four female couplers to each one of these hoses right here. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing to the three other hoses and I'll get back to you guys when I'm done. All right guys, so I've got all the couplers installed on all four of our lines here. So all those will plug right into the top here. So we're all set with that. And now we only got one more bushing to install here, which is gonna be going to this uh, galvanized elbow here. And then from there, we're gonna be installing this half inch barb fitting. So let's go ahead and install those next. And we just gotta connect our final hose here, which I gotta replace, which will be the return line.
We want to get this elbow here pointed straight down. All right there. Tighten up the barb fitting. All right, so now we can take off this old hose here. As you can see here, it was in a real bad shape. This other hose put on here so we don't lose any more fluid. Measure this out. It's like about right here. quick wipe down here and we can make sure it doesn't leak and that's perfect nice and soft pliable it's a good hose too this is actually a tranny hose so it's high pressure hose rated up to like 450 pounds so you should be all set there so now we can connect our four couplers here which is going to be a little bit of trial and error to figure out which ones go where so i think i'm just going to plug them in in any random order we're going to start it up get it bled out and then I'm going to have to just keep swapping these around until I get the right order so that the right cylinders move with the right valve functions. Once I figure out exactly where all these go, I'm going to take some colored zip ties and I'll zip tie these so we'll know if we ever take these off again, which line goes to which port. Put this boot on here. And it's got a jam nut here, which locks into place once you get your adjustment. You may end up putting a longer rod on there. I know you can get these rods almost anywhere. Probably order one online and get them a little bit longer one eventually. But for now, this one will work just fine. Okay, and this boot will just slip on over top here. Just like that. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and fire this thing up and uh, we'll actuate the valve and see how far off we were on connecting those hoses. <laughs> So I just gotta clean up some of this oil mess I made. There's a little bit of oil on the hood here. I wanna get this cleaned out for my brother so it looks nice again. I'll get it all cleaned up. Um, no leaks. The only oil that's up here is from me swapping the fittings around. As you can see, this fitting's nice and dry. Return line's nice and dry. But yeah, overall, it's a pretty nice valve for an eBay valve. I can't remember what I paid for it, but if you guys go online and search uh, four-way loader valve on eBay, you should be able to find this valve. To adjust the hydraulic pressure, which this thing is supposed to be set at around 2200 PSI, I believe, you just crack this nut loose right here, and then you take an Allen wrench, and you either drive the screw in or pull it out to put tension or release tension on the spring there in a the relief valve. So that's how you adjust the pressure. When my brother gets it back, he's gonna paint the rest of this up so it matches the black that he painted and everything else. He's already got the 
paint at his house so he could paint all that um so yeah that's gonna be about it for this one hopefully you guys learned something and if any of you guys are in need of a loader valve and have the old school loader valve like this thing had with two little handles i believe this is going to be a good upgrade option for you guys and now with this video hopefully you guys will know now how to install them as it's pretty darn easy install the hardest thing being just getting the appropriate fittings for your setup and to reach your factory hydraulic lines the way I did with mine. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you guys back out here soon. I still do gotta edit the footage here from this forklift. It's pretty much done now. I got everything finished up on it. So now I just gotta find time to sit down and go through all the footage because I've got hours and hours of footage working on this thing. So hopefully when I get some time here, I will be able to edit that and post that online for you guys. I got another couple projects that we're gonna be doing in here and hopefully a couple more projects outside with the tractor. Um, I've got some property out back that I'm clearing and I'm hoping to get you guys out there with me to hopefully rip out some trees, pull some stumps and clear some land back there. So I will show you guys that in another video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe as always. We'll see you guys in the next one.